the next project, uh, Susanna already mentioned it, uh, the Cloud Wikimedia Toolset project. Uh, I'm not sure who were at Wikimania last year, we also did a presentation on that. Uh, who, was, who was present there at that presentation? And uh, who already know uh, about the Cloud Wiki Toolset project? And who never heard of it? That's, uh, that's good. No, I'm not, uh, so uh, it's uh, it's a cooperation project between uh, some Wikimedia chapters and Europeana. Uh, the goal it has uh, a bit of history. We started uh, a couple of years ago. We started doing large content donations. So, uh, for example, we had the German uh, Bundesrat donating uh, sixty thousand old images. Uh, we had uh, in the Netherlands Trove Museum. Uh, Circle archive being donated. And uh, so we wrote bots and other tools and we put them on the commons. Lots of fun, we have lots of great images, but uh, it doesn't really scale. So, for example, this is an image I re recently uploaded. It's from a big uh, image archive in the Netherlands. They uh, document all the old buildings we have in the Netherlands and they opened up their collection. Uh, I think it's half a million images and most of them are. Comments. <laughs> or, um, this one, uh, I'm not sure. I think this is from the US. Sarah probably recognizes it. It's from Baltimore. One of the museums there, Baltimore Museum, opened up their collection, and a uh, volunteer, uh, uh, Ryan, uh, helped out uploading them uh, all to the comments. Or uh, these ones from the National Archives in the US, actually taken in France uh, uh, during the, the fights in the end. And it's also a really, really big collection. Um, and there are dozens of these kind of collections. But the way we do it right now, it doesn't scale. It's, uh, it's a very small group of people who can do this. You need uh, skills like uh, how to operate a bot, how does, uh, how does technical infrastructure work, how do you map metadata. Uh, most of the code is custom. Um, I have like a bot code, some nails would like to start from scratch again. Uh, it's all based on volunteers, and volunteers like me at some point think like, I've seen that, done that, I'm not going to do another one again. And uh, we're basically starting from scratch every time we're doing this when we get a new volunteer. And some other problems we have is clams, gallery, libraries, archives, and museums want analytics. It's nice that they contribute in something, but they want to see what the impact is of the, the, the content that they donate. Uh, we have some uh, existing tools like uh, Glamorous or Baglama. These tools you can see uh, where the images in a certain category are used. That's Glamorous. Uh, and the second one, Baglama, you can also see how many views the article had uh, where the images are used. So for example, um, your museum, the old museum, you have uh, like the shadow puppets, you know, with the light in the back, and it's used at the English Wikipedia article about shadow puppets, and suddenly you see there's a big spike of uh, people actually viewing your images. Uh, and, but the requirements they have are not very clear. They want to see something with each views, and we want to have a clear set of requirements we can give to the Wikimedia Foundation analytics team, like this is what we want. Uh, so, why did we uh, start working with uh, Europeana? It's, uh, this project has quite a long uh, history before we actually started. Uh, we had uh, several chapters uh, seeing this problem and wanted to solve it. And our first idea was to try if we could do it ourselves. But we recognized we didn't really have the organizational capacity to do it ourselves. Maybe the only chapter around that time we had was Wikimedia Germany. They were already fully booked with all sorts of projects. Projects like, for example, Wikidata was uh, gearing up. We looked at the foundation, but it wasn't uh, really in their uh, strategic plan. That was even before Sue started cutting down projects, so it might be better we didn't do it there. So uh, we started talking with Europeana. Europeana is um, an organization in Europe uh, that's a network of clans working together. Uh, they have about 2,000 members, and they all contribute uh, uh, information about their collection to the central repository. That's their website, Europeana.eu. And uh, so all the metadata is, is freely licensed. Most of the images are not all of them. And they're 
basically have a similar mission to, uh, their mission is focused on Europe and cultural heritage and our mission is just a bit broader because we focus on everyone who uh, Communities are complementary, so we have a lot of active volunteers uh, and they have a lot of glam professionals and that's actually what we all try to do in the glam wiki movement, bringing those together, working together on new projects. The content is also complementary. We have, um, of course, Wikipedia, lots of articles, lots of information, but we don't, uh, we need background data or uh, uh, references or other things, and that, that's what the glam's going to provide. And European is really into open right now. It's, they're really pushing forward the whole idea of freely licensing, opening things up. So it's not a really weird organization. <coughs> they're uh, like, uh, like the Wikimedia Foundation, they're a foundation in the Netherlands, so they're enough for profit. So, uh, by the way, uh, their, all their data is CC0. So, uh, one thing is, uh, it would be really interesting for Wikidata to actually start using their data as source of reference because you can just grab it <coughs> and there's uh, no restriction on that. So, the Glam Wiki toolset. Uh, it started as partnership with uh, three chapters UK, Netherlands, and France, and Switzerland, CH, like I like to call it. Uh, joint later. Um, and these are uh, the two goals of uh, the project. So to build a scalable curator friendly system for mapping metadata and mass uploading content for Glam to Wikimedia Commons. That's the mapping. Basically easily get a lot of data on Commons without making a mess of it. Because everyone can put loads of data on Commons but actually doing it in a way that you won't get an angry community is much And uh, the smaller part, like this is the main part, the uh, most important part, but the second is also important, but much smaller and important, is uh, clear requirements uh, for the analytics team. So what kind of uh, analytics data do we need to work more with GLAM? GLAMs? So it's all started with this design. I had to include it because uh, it's, <laughs> it's still uh, the way it actually uh, works. So. Uh, it starts with the LAM curator. The whole idea of the, of the project is that it's not us uh, driving it, but you can give someone access. So if you have, I don't know, the Rijksmuseum, their curator things like, we want to share images, they can log into it, and they can do their things. It's a wiki, so we can still see what they're doing, we can assist in what they're doing, and they can go into a wizard, uh, and do, I'll go into this more later, do mapping of metadata, uh, mapping of fields, uh, transformation, see a preview, and actually at some point, put it on the comments. On the other side, we have our analytics team taking all the things, uh, uses of the files, and all the projects, making log data, and providing free reports for that. And uh, this should be uh, supported by a mapping registry, like at the museum, I did a uh, mapping of some certain format to comments. It would be nice if someone else could just reuse it. Uh, and uh, some way to export the data, import the data, and maybe some plugins to support this whole process. But basically, this part is the most important. This was made in uh, Ica Wikimedia, so it goes back to what we did. So the first or the second part, the requirements for analytics is uh, is finished. Uh, I put uh, on the first slide a link to the project page uh, on uh, comments, and there you can also find the reports and the most of the information. So I go back a couple slides. Open that. It's much be uh, a bit small, but you can read it. So comments column the Glam Wiki tools of project. If you're on your laptop, you probably want to open that. It's uh, so, we, uh, we made a report, or uh, actually the project team made a report because I'm on the steering group, so I'm actually not doing anything, I'm just telling them if it's good or not, or steering in the right direction. Um, they made a report on um, what are the requirements we plan to have for the analytics. Uh, so, we, there was a survey. So, uh, uh, 32 GLAMs answered in the survey where they were asked, 
several questions about uh, what do you need, what's more important, what's uh, how often would you like to have statistics, and three uh, main things: uh, server, article views, media views, and click throughs. So the first two things we'll focus on because click click throughs is a, a like a swamp you get into because it has a lot of privacy issues and we don't actually track people going from Wikimedia somewhere else. Uh, so we just decided that it's too, uh, too complicated to go into. And we did some um, uh, talks with several people like, what do you need on a technical uh, uh, matter to, uh, to get this working? So we defined a file. <coughs> So one of the problems we have with Wikipedia right now is if you upload a file to comments, uh, it, that's the original file. But if you uh, uh, used an article, you get a thumbnail. Someone else used an article with a different size, that's a thumbnail too. To the logging infrastructure, that's three different files. So if you have a file that's, uh, that's using lots of articles, you might end up with one file having 20 different or 30 different thumbnails. And they all get separate statistics at the moment. Uh, so one problem that needs to be solved is to make it canonical into the view of a file. So I don't care if it's original or it's a thumbnail or whatever, uh, canonicalize. Uh, article view, we have it right now. It's just someone looking at a Wikipedia article or at some page on Wikipedia. And file play, that's a fairly new one for us. It's nice when you're starting to include video in Wikipedia. But how many people actually click the video to watch it? I don't know. There's no uh, analytics data on that. That's not being tracked. So, out of these uh, survey prompts came some high level requirements. So, if I am glam, I want to have overviews, usually on a per monthly basis, of what are my media files. So, in uh, uh, August 2013, I had 50,000 files on comments. And how many of these files are used on a project? So, of these 50,000 files, 2,000 of them are used in the English Wikipedia, for example. And of these, uh, all these 50,000 files, how many views did I have from them? Uh, so, uh, either people looking at them directly, looking at them from an article, or maybe someone embedded them in their WordPress blog, or I don't know, hoplink, you know, the use of Commons files on some completely really different location is allowed. You don't have any clue how many people or how many views that is. That's just happened. Not being tracked. Um, uh, so it gets more difficult. Place with uh, audio and video files. <coughs> I already explained that. Um, and then we get more in the more general analytics questions. So if you're tracking the files, articles, and place, of course people want to have a breakdown by what browser are you using, what country are you coming from. Basically, all the things we're doing with analytics right now. So we can just continue doing that. <coughs> so I'm not just seeing anyone from the analytics team, but uh, at the moment this is like the setup Wikimedia uses for most of their analytics. So they have all the servers serving our, our page views and whatever, and these produce huge amounts of, uh, of logs, uh, like several gigabytes an hour of data, and it's, uh, it's put into the system called Kraken. It's a big data system. Uh, uh, that actually stores all the data. You can do queries on it, so uh, you can, for example, say, uh, ask the, the number of page views or a certain page or really complicated ones. And it's possible to get exported in a structured manner, uh, for example, comma separated file, and then you have lim. Lim is like the presentation layer. <coughs> so if you look like a report card or something like that, that's all the lim uh, producing it for you. Um, so the, the, what uh, actually needs to be solved by the analytic teams is two things in Kraken. So the canonicalizing uh, of files, so the problem with thumbnails, and uh, actually cross-referencing with comments categories. Because the only way you know that the file comes from a certain institution is because you put in a certain category in comments. That information is available, but it's not cross-referenced at the moment. For Kraken, it's just a bunch of file names coming in, and you need to, at some point, take a list of which files are in the category, and the views, and combine that. So that's our uh, the two things. If the 
a little student fixes this, most of the requirements we have right now are already possible. But uh, they're working on it. I, I don't see any anyone from the analytics team. It's, is anyone in? Hmm. That's a shame. We, uh, we need to bother them with it. <laughs> so, the main part, uh, the, the GLAM upload system. So, um, these are the, uh, we've been working on that for almost a year right now. It's uh, already a prototype. It's now uh, possible to import an XML file containing all the metadata about your files, your paintings, or whatever, to make mappings. So, say, a field uh, 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 schilder, schilder and does maps with that field and columns painted. Uh, and it maps the comments template, so you have the pretty layouts. Uh, and it will upload in the background, so you can do some previews, other things at some point, say, okay, I'm confident this works. You fire it up, and Media Wish will start processing your, your files in the background. So you don't have to wait, it's just slowly, uh, so depending on the load, etc. It will uh, more. We have a prototype. Unfortunately, uh, our developer decided to reinstall it without me notifying me, so my account is gone. Uh, but uh, if anyone wants to play around uh, with it, please contact me so uh, you can get an account. So uh, it's, I can, sh I will show you a screencast how it works. But it's more fun to just play around with it, break it, and uh, see how it works. Uh, at the moment, um, we put it in a feature freeze, so it's basically doing what it's supposed to do right now, and we are focusing on getting the code quality up. So uh, uh, no new things will be added, just small things maybe, but it's basically about making it stable enough so it can be uh, deployed on the commons so people can start using it. So as long as it is in the labs, it's nice to play around with it, but we don't have to, can't really use it. But before it goes to commons, it has to go to security review, all sorts of code review. So we're focusing on that right now. So let's see if the screencast uh, works. Oh, I need to sound for that. That's how the share them. It's now stored as these files, but uh, at some point it will be in a more user-friendly format. As well as your own. For this example, I've got a Rikes Museum template I'm going to use, so I'm going to actually copy this right here, insert it in the form and get started like this. There's also um, something else we've added, which is a metadata sets uh, category, which will show you all the XMLs, uh, files that have been uploaded for uh, the tool set. And the one I'm going to use is a Rikes Museum demo or sample. So let's we'll go ahead and copy that, put that into the form. Otherwise, the form is pretty much the same. So I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next step. Uh, the top part of the mapping form is the same as it has been in uh, previous demos. Uh, where we've got to change now is in the ability to add categories uh, to the batch upload. We've got two sections in here. This uh, concept of global categories is uh, not for the entire wiki, but for the batch upload that you're doing. So if, we, if I go ahead and, and add in here, for example, Rex um, Museum is one of my um, categories that will be added globally. It's going to be applied to all of the items that are in the metadata file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more. There's, And I think there's one more that I can add in here, which would be um, paper, artwork. 
And then <clears throat> this section here, item specific categories, um, these are going to be categories that are applied specifically to each item inside the metadata file. So one of the things that we might do is say that this has been painted by just providing a phrase. We, this is optional, you don't have to do it. Um, and then the creator, whoever the creator is of the item. Another one might be painted on and then using um, the date that's part of the metadata. So each item is going to have its own specific creator and date and that will be implied uh, individually. Uh, you don't have to have a phrase and you can actually just select the metadata field if that works for you in your uh, case. I'll go ahead and add just a, let's see, a little summary here. And the rest of the form is the same. Before I go ahead and process the file, though, I want to show you a couple of things here. We're also adding in the um, ability to use institution templates. Uh, the formatting here is a little bit off from Commons because we don't have all of the uh, formatting styles and whatnot that Commons has. And also, um, some of the permission templates, we're starting to pull those in. So if you have um, the Creative Commons public domain license or some other type of licensing, we're trying to match that um, based off of the URL that's in the permissions uh, metadata entry. Um, we also have Creative <laughs> templates, which we're matching as well. Um, just to show you, if you notice here in the form, I've got Rijksmuseum is one of my categories. Whoops, looks like I've got this spelled wrong. There we go, Ranks Museum. Um, and the category Ranks Museum right now is empty. These are the files that will get uploaded. As you can see right now, there's no content for them. Uh, okay, with that being said, I guess I can go ahead and process the file right now. It will take a few minutes. What we've done is made it so that um, initially a main batch job gets created, which will create several sub uh, batch jobs. Um, all of this is happening in the background now. It doesn't depend on uh, wiki page visits like we did in the uh, last sprint. So right now, the batch job for all four files will be created. Then after that's done, each one will run individually and get processed. So it'll take a little bit of time. I think we've got it running uh, once every minute right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then come back and show you the uh, results. So after the uh, batch jobs have completed, the four items have shown up inside the wiki. And taking a look at one of them, we'll take we'll see what the information has been populated. We get the artwork itself. And then the first thing that we notice is in the artist section, we've got creator templates being put into the artwork template. In this case, these are not actual artists, so that's why they're showing up in red. Um, there's the institution template for the Rex Museum, which is showing up. And there's the Creative Com Commons uh, public domain template, which is showing up for permissions. The last thing to point out or notice is the categories that appear down at the bottom of the page. And if this was unique uh, per item, these would be changing. So we've got the painted by. This happens to be the same uh, creator or artist for each of these items, so it's not going to change. And the same thing with the uh, date or the time that uh, the items were painted. And this concludes the Sprint 9 demo. Uh, thanks for listening. We have lots of these sprints, uh, we do them uh, every couple of weeks. So uh, you can find them on the website, they're all uh, numbers, uh, probably next. Uh, that was our main developer, Dan, Dan Antish. Uh, he makes them every uh, couple of weeks. And uh, you can watch more of them and see how they uh, but we can use your help too. Uh, for example, we need to know a few uh, of the plants who are actually interested in using this tool. We have a lot of people saying they might be interested, but we need a clear list and comments like these people are interested and when the tool is ready, we can start using it and uploading files. Because one of the things we want is when we get at the point, to actually start using it right away. So not, not much use of it to have it on comments without using it. Uh, Analytics team, they need, need a bit of a push. Is that something uh, uh, that would really help already with existing co collections that we can show what the impact is and it might help to get our other glands to join us too. It's also for the more technical people, the code is all in, in Git Garrett. Uh, you can comment on it, you can review it, you can expand it. Uh, 
uh, would, uh, would be nice if, uh, to get some more feedback on, on that. Any questions about the project? Not all at once. Yes? Uh, one question about the analytics stuff. Uh, why do you suggest to enhance Quarkum and not enhance the media wiki to collect usage of uh, media files? For thumbnails and stuff. The media, the media wiki already knows when it creates a thumbnail or something. Uh, so the whole setup of me is all layers. So you have uh, the, the Apache's running the application, make me and there's a layer of caching in front of it, and uh, that's serving all the page requests. And Kraken gets the data from the the the, the, from the statue of the screen. screen and up of course. So it has a caching layer. Yeah. Because uh, I think in yeah, that don't have to say that. So I'm not sure what the hit rate is right now, but it used to be like 98%. So 98% of all the data will be handled in the caches, and only the, the misses go to the, the best yeah. Yeah. So okay. you can get the data from there. And this is the setup that Linux team is already you know, uh, working on and expanding and improving <coughs> every day. So it makes sense to focus there. So that's one of the things uh, we're talking about. Of course, we see wiki data coming on the horizon. Uh, at some day, uh, the whole uh, wiki base uh, repository will be active in Commons. We're not there yet. Of course. And um, one of the, European has a, a, a lot of experience with mapping data because they have 2,000 institutions all contributing data and they map it to something. And uh, one of the experiences they have is that dumbing course sucks. <laughs> it's uh, like take uh, for example you have to field doubling core DC formats. You can have uh, 15 by 15 centimeters in there. That's well, it's also JPEG. It's also a format. So it's so overly standardized that uh, it, it usually doesn't make sense anymore. And uh, so it's better to go just one step back to the, the, the format that the institution has because that's well described curator really knows uh, the way their da data is structured. So for example, with the Rijk Museum, uh, the curator really knows the, the, how their system works, the weird things, weird fields, like, oh yes, we added that because someone wanted that, but don't use that. <laughs> and, uh, so, and with Europeana, they have a lot of experience in uh, how to deal with these kind of things. And I think they're actually publishing their mappings at the moment, so how they map it from the institution to their format. So you can probably go back to that again and just use that as a base reference. So the mapping is, that's the most important uh, or, and the most difficult part of this whole thing. But uh, the whole multilingual part is also a challenge for that. And when do you expect this to be ready? <laughs> what is the new deadline? The new deadline. Uh, so it really depends on the code quality and the review and how much uh, the foundation is willing to cooperate. Uh, it uh, was a bit low on the list, but now we're getting a lot of uh, good feedback and things are going to improve well. And that's, but that's on the critical box right now. If we uh, have several people from the foundation who uh, comment and help to steer it in the right direction so we can get it deployed, uh, then it would be this year. But if there's no feedback at all, it's Forever. So maybe a rock and a comment on that. We're <laughs> <laughs> working on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're like, giving pretty active review on it. Yeah. Uh, the first patch is merged now, and there's a bunch of comments sitting in here. And yeah. Dan has to work on it. So it, it's built as an uh, extension 
and it was first committed like a big, one big extension, and we now just merged it and now patching up all of the uh, different issues that are being addressed. And that's much easier than having a huge patch yet with hundreds of lines of codes, and at some point everyone was lost in it, so we just merged it and now addressing all the separate things, like, oh, that's not working, that should be done uh, differently. And, uh, yeah, that's, if we get, get that uh, going, one of the things that's changed in the past um, couple of months is we're, we now actually have the, the start of the multimedia team. Um, Mark Holmquist is, is, is on the multimedia team now. Um, uh, Fabrice Florin is also uh, uh, now moving, shifting his focus to that. And uh, we have a couple of openings uh, as well. So that, that was something that before we didn't have an obvious owner um, foundation to, to help so for the first part of the project from the Media Foundation, Diri van Lier was on the team, or on the steering group. And so he completely focused on the analytics part, because that's his job at the foundation. And I'm, I'm not sure who, uh, the was during my holiday, I'm not sure who's on it right now. We changed it a bit so to make it more uh, on the people who actually have to implement it on the media side. Well, we'll see. Please try to log in. Play around with it, uh, read the documents, uh, provide feedback, and we can do that. Uh, more questions? Okay, thanks for your time.